What is Ford Link? Is it a gimmick? Do you know what it is? Do you know what its purpose is? What underlying technologies is it? Is it all just a sham? Stay tuned and find out. Hey guys, Mike here from Fortinet Guru. It's been about two and a half, three weeks since I've posted a video. You guys know back in January I was in an accident. I suffer from pretty serious headaches and migraines now because of it. So anytime I fall off the map, just assume that it's it's bad because they come in waves. They get, they're always there, but they get significantly worse in waves. Either that or Fortinet has finally got pissed off enough at my videos that they kidnapped me and took me out somewhere and shot me, right? Just kidding, they wouldn't do that, hopefully. Anyways, so I get a lot of email. Um, I'm not a big channel by any means, but I do post a lot of things that make people actually produce some level of response, whether it's hate mail or love mail or questions about things that people are running into because I do have uh, a fairly large number of use cases and experience and things that people just simply need help with. So I get a lot of email. Um, and this one I got about a week ago, five days ago or so from a guy named Josh and it kind of struck me so I figured I would read it and make a video about it because a lot of people probably have this question. So, Josh sends me an email saying, Mike, is it my imagination or does Fortilink suck? If your switch is connected via Fortilink, why can't you treat those ports like they're on the firewall instead of being separate devices? Instead, it's just a glorified VLAN trunk. Bog standard 8021Q. It irritates me every time I set up a new system. Am I the only one who thinks this? Thanks, Josh. Now I'm going to leave Josh's last name out of this because he didn't sign up for him to, for himself to be the subject of a video and I certainly don't want him to get any unwarranted flack. Um, but yeah, man, you're pro well, you're not the only one that thinks that. When I first heard of the ability of a FortiGate managing a Forti switch, I was of the same opinion or impression or um, idea, right? I thought Hell yeah, all the physical ports are going to show up under network interfaces. I can control it all from there. Life will be great. Make one giant hardware switch out of them, just let it ride, right? And that's simply not the case. Um, for those of you that might not know as much about Fortilink and how it all works, Fortilink is essentially VLAN tagging, just like Josh said. Um, well, Fortilink runs on VLAN tagging. 802. 1Q is the standard and basically I'm trying to figure out the best way to put this. Fortilink is like CapWap for your Fort switch. It lets you manage the switch. They build a tunnel, the switch pulls its config from the FortiGate and then it just lets it ride. That doesn't mean you get to treat the switch like it's actually part of the FortiGate, though it does let you control it from the FortiGate. Um, now that did give a lot of people a lot of frustration when it first came out because they were of the impression that it was going to let them see all the physical ports under network interfaces, which is not the case. Now you can see all of the VLANs under network interfaces on your FortiGate, but that's because, just like we said, it's a 802.1Q trunk configuration, so it's got to live on the FortiLink interface and be able to, to go from there. So yes, FortiLink is not what you're expecting it to be, Josh. It's simply a management protocol so you can configure your switch without having the SSH or web GUI to that device directly and hand jam stuff that way, which is nice. And as much as I hate to say it, single pane of glass management, which total marketing term, I hate it. But it does have some level of application here. Um, in the sense that you're managing it from a single point, not a single page because you can't run it all from the network interfaces tab. But yeah, man, you you can log it from the FortiGate like it's part of the FortiGate if, I mean, you want to think of it like, you know, your brain is part of your body, therefore it's all the same even though your, you know, your arms and legs aren't physically in your brain. I don't know. I did. I thought that was going somewhere. Anyways, but what I'm looking at right here is actually, if you go to Google and you look up 
FortiSwitch, managed FortiSwitch topologies or network topologies for managed FortiSwitch. This actually does the best job of telling it. One, it tells you all the different ways that you can cable up your FortiSwitch and manage it. But two, it actually tells you exactly um, how it's laid out. So, FortiGate connects directly to each FortiSwitch. Each of these FortiLink ports is added to the logical hardware switch or software switch interface on the FortiGate, which means as far as physical interface configuration is concerned, the only thing that you can see under network and interfaces are the ports that belong to that hardware switch or software switch you create and the VLANs that you tag on that. Optionally, you can connect other devices to the FortiGate logical interface. These devices must support IE 8021Q VLAN tagging and will have layer two connectivity with the FortiSwitch ports. So what does this mean? This means if you have a device that supports 8021Q, you can plug it into the FortiLink hardware switch ports. And as long as it's tagging the proper tags for the proper VLANs, it'll communicate as though it's on your FortiSwitch. And an example of this working is how many of you have ever had a FortiSwitch that shows offline, but it's still passing traffic exactly how it should? That's right. Maybe your NTP server was not configured properly on your internal interface, right? And so your switch CapWAP tunnel keeps going down. Well, since it's already connected long enough to pull its config, it's still passing traffic because as far as the FortiGate is concerned at that point, that switch is just a regular layer two switch doing the VLAN thing. I know, it's crazy. And I get a lot of people that are like, man, my switch is showing offline, but it's passing traffic, stupid bug. And it's almost always their damn NTP server not being set right for the interface. But anyways, yeah, check out this page. It has a long list of, of stuff. It's network topologies for managed Florida switches. The one that pops up by default is the 5.6. It absolutely stays the same for various versions, but it'll actually give you a complete rundown. But yeah, FortiLink isn't a gimmick. FortiLink is a control mechanism that basically utilizes protocols that have existed forever almost, right? They're not reinventing the wheel, guys. FortiLink is not some revolutionary thing that's changing the way the world is. It's, you know, we had the wheel, we invented engines for industrial things, and then we took engines and wheels and put them together to make cars. It's just taken pre-existing protocols and finding a better way to use them to make life easier for the engineers. And I'm not going to fault Ford in that for that, and you know... You guys know I'll throw some mud in a heartbeat if I think they're suspect. I'm a big fan of FortiLink. Hell, I even like using FortiLink over Layer 3, which is a video that we're going to end up doing pretty soon. Uh, the more you do that, the more it just makes sense. So, if you like the video, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Help that algorithm jive things up so others can find this video and learn about FortiLink. If this is your first time seeing one of my videos, do yourself a favor. Hit the subscribe button if you liked it. That way you can actually get updates whenever new videos come out. Um, I usually post once or twice a week, headaches allowing. But um, yeah, if you guys have comments, questions, or you know, you just want to talk smack in the comments below, do me a favor post underneath and let me know what you think. Otherwise, you guys be safe. I know COVID's got the world pretty much upside down still. And uh, until next time, see you.